My mom believes I'm sensitive in some way, whether that be empathic or a little more than that. I'm not so much of a believer that I am those, but I am a believer in paranormal occurrences. This week, I've been having a lot of issues sleeping or staying asleep. I suffer from insomnia, especially when I have too much going on with my mental health. School full-time, work full-time, and a focus on a big move is making me stressed nonetheless. When this happens, I typically can have lucid dreams, but lately, I feel as though I'm losing control of my dreams, with weird things happening in them and outside of them. From my sister getting swept away in a tornado, to ghostly figures escaping a satanic setting, to freakish lightning storms. All of which are normal when I'm under heavy amounts of stress. Last night, I had an experience that left me confused. I fell asleep around 1am. I get up for work at about 8.30am, so it's not a terrible sleep, but isn't great. Throughout the night, I had been in and out of sleep, or feeling like I'm not dipping into the needed REM. I fell into a lucid slumber. The setting was my old preteen to adulthood home that sat on a lonely hill. The nearest neighbour wasn't far, but it was a walk. The back side of the house had a full view of the valley below, and the other mountain across this valley. It was a manufactured home, but in my dream it lacked repair and seemed abandoned. My parents were there along with my fiancé. It was evening or maybe even dark or twilight. The sky was blood red. A storm was brewing. Distant thunder with blood red flashes in the sky. A wild pack of dogs roamed the 20 acre property as if to hunt something down or maybe run away from something. The house didn't have windows and the doors were torn up wood doors that didn't look like they could keep even the biggest dangers out. Basically, all of the Halloween vibes you can think of. I felt nervous and out of control of what was happening. The storm got closer and my mom told my stepdad not to go outside. He didn't listen. He seemed mesmerized by the sky. He stepped outside onto our paved to gravel driveway just outside of our front door, leading to our garage. Staring at the sky, not breaking contact, and my mom was now yelling at him to get back inside. I then felt as though I was sucked away into the sky, as if a hand came down and picked me up, and then I hovered over him, and I could see him staring. He was staring at me. He reached up with both arms, and I shot down at him as if I was the lightning. And then I woke. It was hot. I was dizzy. My fiancé was sweating in his sleep, which is a regular occurrence. Human furnaces, am I right? I laid in bed and listened. It was quiet. I should sleep. I need to, I told myself. I laid there spinning in this daze. Maybe I needed water. Maybe I just, if I just closed my eyes, I can just sleep. I closed my eyes to stop spinning. We live in a very small cabin about the size of most people's living rooms. There's a loft above the front door, a small kitchenette on the left, a couch on the right. Behind the couch is our very small room that fits our queen bed and our dog kennel for our pups and a bathroom behind the kitchenette, all as if to walk in front of the door. I laid there getting the courage to either go back to sleep, because it's an emotional battle of its own, or get water. I'm lazy. I tried to sleep. God, why can't I sleep? Hello? I opened my eyes. Did I just hear someone? I heard hello. Not possible. It's just us that lives here. It's a newer cabin too. There's no way. I'm not doing this. I need sleep. I laid there, and the spinning continued. I need water. I sat up, the spinning immediately stopped. I know I heard that. It sounded like it came from the couch. I peeked around the corner. I wasn't scared, but curious. Nothing was there. It was silent. Fiancé was asleep, and so were the pups, all cuddled on the bed and on my legs. Damn dogs. It was silent, very quiet. Water isn't worth this right now. I laid back down, going back into my spinning spell. Why can't I sleep? Hello. My eyes shot open. It was an impatient female voice, came from the couch. Nobody was there when I checked before, and then as suddenly as I woke, I fell back asleep, as if my body chose to sleep over the paranoia, the vertigo, and the stress this brought me, as if my body said, this is taking too much energy. I'll handle it from here. I didn't dream after that, 
but woke to my alarm and came out of another spinning slumber. I've never heard anything vocal before, and it didn't necessarily startle me, but confused me more than anything. I've had many experiences, but this seemed to be the most I felt something present. Maybe tonight I'll rest. Wish me luck. This happened when I was 13 years old, spending the Christmas holidays abroad, in a rural part of France. My parents are French and I was born in France, but I grew up in Canada since I was two years old. We spent a lot of summer and winter holidays there. I was staying with relatives of mine in their house when this occurred, which was a very old farmhouse. On this particular day, my cousins and I decided to stay inside for the day because it was snowing heavily. We spent most of the day just wasting time and horsing around. A little later in the afternoon, my older cousin and I went up into the attic together because she was looking for something, and I followed her because I was curious to see the attic. There was a lot of stuff up there that interested me, like old books and some antique items. Once she found what she needed, I asked her if it was okay if I stayed up there for a while to look around. She giggled and said something to the effect of, why, it's just a bunch of old shit up here. But yeah, if you want to. I spent about half an hour walking around looking at stuff until I happened upon some old book from the early 1800s that seemed intriguing to me because I was and am a bit of a literature nerd. I sat down and read it for a little while before deciding that I wanted to take it back to my bedroom to read every night before bed. When I closed the book and went to stand up, my gaze immediately shifted over to a woman who was sitting in a chair on the left side of the room. This briefly startled me at first and made me gasp because I'd never seen her before and I didn't hear her come into the attic. She was wearing very old clothing, had long blonde hair and she was quite pretty. She looked like she was somewhere between 25 and 30 years old. She didn't look solid though and it's hard to explain exactly what I meant by that. She wasn't like the stereotypical Hollywood eyes translucent ghost but she had a certain opaqueness about her that tells you on an instinctual level that you're not looking at a living biological entity. She smiled and said to me, Désolé si je vous a fait pire ma chère. Sorry if I scared you, dear. At this point, I didn't feel any fear or apprehension at all. This apparition radiated a kind, warm and positive energy that I could somehow feel right down to my core. And I felt safe in her presence. It was a very brief encounter. Around five seconds after she spoke, she stood up, walked about seven feet to the right of the room and faded away mid-stride. I just silently sat there dumbfounded for a few minutes. When I left the attic, I was hesitant to tell anybody about what I saw, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. A few days later, I decided to privately ask my youngest cousin about it. She was eight years old, and I figured that younger kids are usually a little more open to things like this, and less judgmental than teenagers and adults. To my surprise, she was quite candid about it. When I asked her if she had ever seen a lady who appeared out of nowhere, she responded, Do you mean the blonde lady? When I nodded, she then said something to the effect of, Yeah, I see her sometimes. It's okay. She's nice. She told me that she had been seeing her since she was about five years old. We didn't really talk much more about it, and I didn't tell anybody else what I had seen. It's something that will always vividly stick in my memory because it was so surreal and I can still visualize her face when I close my eyes. I never did find out who she was. The fact that the farmhouse was very old would lead me to believe that she most likely lived there at one time. I don't think that all ghosts are forlorn spirits yearning for something. I have read stories about some that come across as harmless and seem happy. Maybe some of them occasionally enjoy visiting places where there are a lot of fond memories for them. This story comes down from my grandparents, who grew up in a small town in El Salvador. This is one among many encounters with the paranormal in their lives. Like many in El Salvador, my grandparents came from a town deeply religious and entrenched in the Catholic faith. Angels and demons are a real part of everyone's lives. 
My grandmother was nine months pregnant with my uncle when her water finally broke. It was the middle of the night. Unfortunately for my grandparents, their house was on the other side of the town river, where lighting was poor and the roads were dirt. To get to the town centre to catch a ride to the hospital, my grandparents needed to walk across a narrow, poorly lit bridge and up a large hill. An uneasy trek, even when you're not getting ready to give birth. As my grandparents reach the river, they can hear the flow of the water in the cool breeze. My grandfather tells my grandmother to stay strong and focused. There's no time to be caught off guard. As they're about to walk across the bridge, my grandmother hears a cry. A little girl, barefoot and sitting on a rock by the river. Help me, she says. She can't be more than five years old. The little girl is looking right at my grandmother. Help me, I have a splinter in my foot. My grandmother immediately feels a sense of motherly duty come over her as the little girl tends to her foot. My grandmother becomes very concerned for this little girl sitting on a rock in the middle of the night. She approaches the little girl who's got tears streaming down her face. As she reaches closer, my grandfather leaps in between them. He takes out his machete and with a swift movement, he makes the sign of the Holy Cross in front of the little girl. To my grandmother's amazement, the girl disappears immediately. My grandfather turns to her and says, you know better than this. You know the devil disguises itself as innocent and inviting as it can. My grandmother begins to sob and thanks my grandfather as they continue their journey to the hospital. This story took place in my household when my daughter was about four or five years of age. And it's a true story. I used to put my daughter to bed by reading her a story and sitting in her room until she went to sleep. This allowed me to spend much needed quality time with her after very long days on the job. We started to notice that when we woke her up in the mornings to go to daycare, she always complained of being tired. After a few weeks of her complaining to be tired and not wanting to get up for school, we started to question her. I knew for a fact she was going to sleep because many nights I had fallen asleep on her floor and upon waking to take myself to bed, I would notice that she was sound asleep. After some prompting and questioning her, this is the story that she told us. It seems that very late in the evening after we were all in bed asleep, she would be awakened by an old lady with a very colorful long dress that would tickle her feet and wake her up at night. My daughter exclaimed that the lady never spoke, just smiled, gave her a couple of tickles on her feet and just sat and watched over her until she fell back asleep. This occurrence happened for over a month, and although I made it a point to spend the night in her room a couple of times, just to confirm or debunk her claims, this apparition still came in the quiet of the night after I was asleep and continued the ritual, despite the fact my large butt was lying on the floor. I never heard my daughter stir and never caught a glimpse of the old lady. At one point, my daughter happened to see a photo of a person wearing a colourful kimono, at which point she exclaimed that the lady that had been visiting her wore a colourful dress just like that. Not the same one in the picture, but similar. Now, my daughter is half Japanese and at that point in her life, she had never worn or seen anyone in a kimono but she was dead set on thinking that this was a similar dress to what the old lady wore upon entering her room and interacting with her. After many discussions with my wife, we chalked it up to my wife's grandmother who may have been doing the visitations. My wife had been close to her grandmother and was the first one at a very young age to find her grandmother deceased in the bathtub. Needless to say, it was a traumatic experience for my wife who again was so very close to her grandmother. Prompting more of a description of the kindly old lady from my daughter as to what the lady looked like, it was confirmed that it was my wife's grandmother visiting the grandchild she never got to see. We were overjoyed by this and yet broken up and wished we had the chance or ability to see her and express our love and thanks for looking over our daughter. However, as the month passed with my daughter being awakened every night and tired in the morning, with a heavy heart, I went into my daughter's room while everyone was out of the house and with the utmost respect and reverence asked grandmother not to wake the baby anymore. 
She needed her rest for school and that we loved her and were happy she wanted to visit and see her grandchild, but she could no longer wake her up or let her see her. Truly, it was one of the hardest and heartfelt things that I have done, but I knew it was right. The next evening, my daughter had a sound sleep. When asked, she told us the old lady had come to say goodbye and never showed herself again. As I write this, I'm so thankful that from beyond the grave, grandmother wanted to see and meet her granddaughter. And although we've never had another encounter with the grandmother in the kimono, I know she's still out there, watching over our family. I was watching my grandchild that evening. It was a quiet evening, and after cooking and eating dinner that I had prepared for my grandchild, I retired to the living room to watch the news, leaving my grandchild playing in the hallway outside my bedroom door so that I could keep an eye on her. My grandchild has a sweet five-year-old, and I left her colouring and playing with her dolls quietly. I sat in my living room chair and turned on the television, turning the sound down on low so I could hear my little one if she called out to me or anything. After about an hour or so, I heard her in conversation with someone. There was no one else in the house besides myself, and who could she be having a conversation with? I sat dumbfounded, thinking it must be her playing with her dolls. I dismissed it and turned my attention to what was transpiring on the television screen. After a few minutes, and the conversation with my grandchild still going on, I began to listen on her conversation with what I thought were her dolls. However, to my amazement, the conversation was way beyond just playing with her dolls. She was asking questions, and it seemed like someone, although I couldn't hear them, was in return responding back to her. My curiosity kept me glued to the seat as I listened in for another minute or two, before deciding to go and see whom or what she was interacting with. Before I could get up and out of my seat, she stepped in the room with me, sat down beside me, and I asked, Sweethearts, who were you talking to? Were you playing with your dolls? She turned around and looked at me and said, No, Grandma, I was talking to your mama and daddy. I said, Baby, you couldn't possibly be talking to my mother and father. They've been dead for many years now. My grandbaby looked at me very seriously and matter-of-factly and said, Granny, they were asking me questions about you and how you were doing. Granny, they told me they still love you and miss you. From that night on, there was never a mention from her about my deceased parents, and this never happened again when it was just the two of us at the house. However, without a single doubt in my mind, I know that evening my parents were checking in on me through my grandbaby. This incident still brings tears to my eye when I think or talk about it. This incident is from Mad Island, a bunch of islands in the outskirts of Mumbai, the capital of the Indian state of Maharashtra. Mad Islands is still not very well developed. It is still considered a remote place with roads built around forest areas. Not all parts of the roads are well lit by street lights. Some don't even have them. Only very few residential properties are there. Around 12 years ago, Smooky went to visit one of her friends who used to live in Mud Island. It was around 1am. She found an empty taxi passing by. She sat down in the back seat. After a few moments of driving, Smooky noticed that someone was sitting beside her. An old lady with a big creepy smile on her face, dressed up in a white sari, a traditional dress of Indian women. He sat beside her, but not looking towards her, but staring in front not looking towards Samuki. Samuki noticed all this with the corner of her eyes. She couldn't believe if this was all real. She did not dare to take a look, as if she did, all this would become real. She could see that the lady was smiling, not even by looking at her, just from her peripheral vision. Samuki was frozen. Her face grew pale, not knowing what to do. Fear growing every moment, that what would happen if she turned her head to see her. At this point, tears rolled down her eyes, praying to God that her destination arrive soon. She kept her eyes straight the whole time. Nobody talked throughout the journey. 
A few minutes pass by and she reaches the destination. The taxi stops outside the front gates of her friend's villa. It would still take a minute's walk to reach the doorbell as it was a huge villa. Samuki tells the driver to drop her inside in front of the door. For some reason, the driver hesitates but gives in as Samuki insists him, now crying. She's unable to take it anymore. She just wants to jump out of the taxi and run as fast as she can, but doesn't want the driver to leave her alone. The car drops her in. The old lady is still sitting, smiling, but not looking at Samuki. As soon as the car stopped, Samuki jumped out of the car and gave the driver the money. Still not looking at the lady, still crying. But as soon as the driver took the money, he looked at Samuki. With a blunt face, somewhat scared, he asked her, Ma'am, did you see the lady too? So this took place about 20 years ago. I was seven at the time, and my family consisting of my mom, her boyfriend and my sister, had just moved into a new house. It was located just outside of a suburb, so we had neighbours within walking distance, and civilization was just a five minute drive away. This was a pretty big house. Downstairs with the living room, kitchen, bathroom, dinner, dining room, and a small room for the washing machine. Upstairs was three bedrooms and a small bathroom. One last thing that is important to know is that when you walked into the house, the staircase would be immediately to your right and you could see the walkway that led to the bedrooms. It all started with my mom. She was working nights, so there were several days per week that she had off, so she was often alone in the house during the days. One day, she had done some laundry and was carrying it into my room, which was the biggest room in the house located at the far left of the upstairs hallway. She put my clothes in a closet, closed it and walked away. But as she reached the doorstep, the closet opened. Confused, she went back and closed it, but still the same result. Although this was a closet door where you had to twist the handle and pull for it to open, she didn't think much of it. But this kept happening almost every time she went into my room. On top of this, she started to feel this intense feeling of someone watching her in there. As soon as she stepped foot into my room, an immense pressure came over her chest, and all she could think about was to get out of the room. She later told me that she would sometimes wait with whatever business she had there until someone else was home. And apparently, she had told friends how she wasn't comfortable with me sleeping in that room. Then we have little old me. My mom didn't tell me any of her experiences as I was a young lad and she didn't want to frighten me. But I also started to feel the same thing she had. Neither creepy pasters or YouTube were a thing and I hadn't started watching horror movies so I had a hard time identifying the feeling. I would often avoid spending time in my room if I was alone because I just felt scared. I also heard the sound of the closet doors opening. I would have nightmares about people coming into my room. I don't remember this, but my mom has told me how I sometimes would talk in my sleep, their bedroom was next to mine, and say stuff like, get out. Then we have the experience that I remember most clearly. It was around three in the afternoon. I had just arrived home from school. The rest of my family was away grocery shopping. This wasn't unusual. I had been home alone multiple times. So I walk up to the house, open the door, and just as I get inside, I hear something. Loud breathing, coming from upstairs. Then I hear heavy footsteps, slow but determinant. They go from room to the stairs. I bolt outside, scared half to death. My first thought was that a burglar was inside the house. I waited in the rain for 30 minutes before my family came home and I told them what had happened. They found nothing. I thought I would end this by, by retelling an experience my mother's boyfriend had. He was and is a skeptic towards anything paranormal. So one evening, he had a friend over. My mum was at work. I was with a friend and my sister was asleep upstairs. It's important to note that my sister was three at this time. He was in the living room, which was located downstairs underneath my room, watching some TV with a friend. They're talking and having a good time suddenly are interrupted by a thud above them, in my room. 
and then they hear slow, heavy footsteps going from my room and stopping at the stairs. They both freeze up and fix their gaze on the top of the stairs. After a couple of seconds, they remember my little sister being asleep upstairs, so they gather courage and rush upstairs but find nothing. The friends got so spooked by this that he went home, and my mother's boyfriend eventually admitted that even he couldn't explain it. Probably best to prefix this with the fact that I'm not a believer. However, there are some things in my life, most of which happened in this house, I cannot explain. This being one of them, and particularly peculiar as it happened many times, from ages 5 to 17. A static-like sparkle existed on a single bedroom door. It was about 50 centimeters high, 30 centimeters wide, existed on the top half of the door, and it looked like television static, but whiter and softer. As I walked into the room, the sparkle was on the right side of me, and as I exited the room, it was on the left side of me. So it was on a fixed point of the door, and not in my eye, so to speak. It would only exist in my peripheral, and disappear if I looked at it directly. However, it would still be there in my peripheral when I turned my head back. To me, it looked like an artist's depiction of energy. I often thought about reaching out and touching it, but never found the courage due to the stories of negative paranormal activity of this house, the reason the previous owners moved. The sparkle would come and go over the years, staying for a week or two, and then disappearing for a year, until I got to about 14, and then it became a memory. As I entered adulthood, I always thought about the strange sparkle, as the room with the door became my bedroom, then when I was 17. Now feeling like a rational human, the sparkle returned. It actually panicked me, and I even moved rooms. I moved out of the house entirely not too long after that, but never got an answer as to what it was. But it's still something I think about every few months. And something as I get older only leaves me with more questions. When I was a little kid, between the ages of 5 to 6, my family and I lived in a pink house in a little quarter sack in Apex, North Carolina. The house was built on a cemetery. The builders moved the tombs, but not the bodies. I don't know why. Now, I don't have many memories about the house, so my parents told me stories when we lived there. Story 1. The Greedy Children This story is very short, but my father told me that two children would take me and my sister's toys. So this happened when a babysitter came to look after us. Me and my sister went to the playroom up in the attic. When my father came back home, he said that he found us arguing with someone. When he asked us who we were talking to, we said, the children won't let us play with our toys. Story two, the man at my bedside. So me and my sister slept in the same room in a bunk bed. My mum and dad said that I said when I woke up, I would tell them that there was a man who sat on my bed. Now this would happen often, but not too often. I don't remember the man, but it still gives me chills sometimes. Story 3. Paintings and Children My house had a hall where we would hang up paintings. My dad said that sometimes they would just plop off. This went off very often. My dad also said that he heard someone running up and down the hall. To him, they sounded like children playing. Story 4. Mirror in the Bathroom my mum and dad were sleeping when the mirror in the bathroom fell down and crashed. Now this sounds like normal. It could have been. It could have just been lost or something. But recording to my parents the mirror fell and was thrown out of the bathroom then crashed. Story 5. Mom? Very sure, but I remember when I was falling asleep, I saw an outline of a woman leaving my bedroom. I called out to the outline saying, Mom? But it didn't respond. I simply shrugged it off and went to bed. Story 6. Lady in Red My father told me this story. So one night, my dad and his aunt were watching a movie and drinking wine. My dad said that he heard something behind me. So he turned around and saw a lady walking down the staircase. According to him, the lady wore a very fluffy scarf 
and had a long cager in her mouth. The lady looked at them and said, get out, then walked through the floor. His aunt was very concerned and my dad just said, just keep drinking. I don't know who lives there now, but I know for sure they're having one hell of an experience. I'm going to start this out really blunt, and I'm sorry for that, but there's really no other way for me to start it. I have a friend that died a few years ago. He and I used to be really close. Our main forms of contact were always texts, messages on Facebook before Messenger, or calls because we lived in different states. He helped me through a lot. We grew apart due to being on different life paths. He was active duty military, I became a mom and got married. But we always touched base with each other occasionally. He died in 2017. A few months later, I got a notification on my phone that said, his name had joined Messenger, say hi. That stupid Messenger notification you get when someone downloads it. I went straight into a panic attack brought on by grief. I rationalized it away that maybe his fiance or his parents had downloaded it to check his messages or something. Last year in October, I had a dream. I was on my phone. Weird, because I never see cell phones in my dreams. And I got a message notification with the little picture bubble and everything. Him. Hey, just checking in. How are you doing? Me. What? What's going on? This has to be a joke. Who is this? Him. It's me. What are you talking about? How are you doing? How are the kids? Side note, I only had one child when he was alive. Second was born about a year and a half after he died. Me. They're doing good. I still don't understand. Him. I gotta go. I'll check in again later. Needless to say, I was all kinds of freaked out. I don't know if it was wishful thinking or if he actually visited me. But I feel it was an actual visitation. Back in the summer of 2016 as a teen... I went with a family friend to their home in China, specifically Tianjin. Note that they are wealthy and the home was very large. In the first few nights while in bed, I heard some whistling sounds around the house, but chalked up to my friend's family just making a tune. The whistling tune occurred every one to two minutes to an hour and was made up of two notes, a higher note and a lower note that prolongs a bit. A few more days in, I was home alone due to the family needing to attend some family emergency and I heard the whistling again and happening at different areas of the house. I was too scared to go outside my room to check so I waited till morning. I checked everywhere around the house but it just doesn't make sense as to what can make that whistling sound that can occur all around the house. Then my breaking point. As I was packing up my stuff to go see family in Hong Kong the next day, I heard the whistling again, but next to my ear, when I was at the pitch dark stairway. My goodness. I hurried to the living room, turned on the TV to watch some random movie on full blast, I think it was Judge Dredd, and just sat still for a while. I said fuck it to the rest of my packing, and just waited till morning on the couch, and get the fuck out to the airport. About a couple of weeks later... I came back a bit nervous, but felt a bit better as my friends and their family are back so that I can ignore the situation. I took a nap after the long trip and experienced the worst nightmare I ever had. I still remember it quite vividly, and basically it was my relatives, all as the undead slash demons, and I was being chased but couldn't escape. To this day, this was my creepiest experience, and as someone who tends to not be superstitious... I believe those events were terrifying and paranormal. Just for context, my wife and I lived in our house for almost 10 years. During the majority of this time, we've had zero paranormal experiences. About a year and a half ago, my mother-in-law passed away. She was really close with my wife and obviously has been hard on her. Since her passing, a few odd things have happened. A knocking here and there, but quiet enough to disregard it as something other than paranormal. The sound of doors closing gently, which has never happened before. 
but we just assumed it was heating or cooling, closing a partially open door, which we've never or seen or heard or witnessed happen. But we just debunk most weird occurrences to something other than paranormal. My first major experience was when my wife was out of town for work about a year ago. I had a video call with my wife and we talked about half an hour and she decided she was going to bed. I decided to make Jack and Coke and relax for a bit, and I went to bed. So I make my drink, and while I'm stirring it up, the shot glass slides about 8 inches across the counter. There was no water or alcohol on the counter that could have assisted it sliding. I tried to recreate it to no avail. So officially spooked a bit, I had to call my wife back. She calmly says, my mom must be hanging with you, having a drink. I kind of felt honoured that she'd hang with me and just went along with it and tried to enjoy my drink. So over the next year or so, the same sounds kept happening, but nothing like the shot glass. Until about a few weeks ago. It was about 2pm and my 14 year old daughter was over for the weekend. I was showing her our newly remodeled bathroom, which was down the hallway from our kitchen, maybe 20 to 30 feet, and we heard a loud clap sound. And my wife said, the fuck was that? So we came out to see what happened, and she instantly assumed it was me sneaking up behind her and clapping. But I assured her that we were both in the bathroom, not anywhere in the proximity of where we heard the clap. We were all just kind of in shock. We all heard it loud and clear. We were all standing around talking about it, and then all of a sudden, there's another loud clap, which sounded like it was just a few feet away from my head, and in between where my daughter and I were standing. I physically felt the vibrations of the air. We were all stunned again and in disbelief about it. We all just kind of joked it was the mother-in-law letting us know she's still around us or something like that. Now it's been a few weeks and I've had no new occurrences or sounds. Till about 45 minutes ago. My wife was in the garage and heard another loud clap. The garage door was closed. Everyone in the house, she was all alone. I heard the clap from inside the house, but just assumed it was her making it somehow. She came inside and told me she heard the clap again, and I told her I had heard it as well. Definitely something paranormal in my opinion, but has anyone had something similar to this? Would love to hear your experiences or opinions. This happened around 2020 or 2019, I can't remember. I just finished washing my face and brushing my teeth and ready to go to bed. Inside my bedroom, there was my younger brother, let's call him Jay. He was playing FIFA on my laptop. When I entered the room, I saw him leaning on the wall behind him, pausing the game, scrolling through his phone and a joystick on his lap. I walked in front of him and jumped straight into the bed. The room itself was tiny, It was around 2 by 2 meters squared. Jay was sitting on the floor right next to the bed. The bed had no frame. It was like just two beds stacked on top of each other. The laptop was on the small or short table right next to my head and Jay was on my feet. Anyway, I pulled the blanket over my head, closed my eyes and not long after, I could feel something pressing on the empty space of the bed. Then I felt body heat and breathed next to me and I thought... Jay must be tired and decided to lay down on the bed. Then I felt shifts and could tell Jay is now laying on his side and opening his mouth wide in front of my ear hole, giving a hot feeling to my ear. When we were a lot younger, we'd do that to each other as a joke. But now I thought, bro, you're in high school already. Can you still do that shit? Before I could say anything to Jay, I heard the game's commentators. You see, when you paused FIFA, you can hear chants, but not the commentators. So when you unpaused it, you can hear the commentators again. And I felt shifts on my feet. Then Jay clears his throat, but the ahem sound wasn't coming from next to my ear, but down there on my feet. I could also hear Jay was pressing the joystick buttons. I was like, wait a minute. If Jay is there on my feet, then who is next to me? My heart was beating so fast. I quickly pulled the blanket down and sure enough, there was no one there next to me. Jay stared at me like, what's going on? I didn't say anything to Jay, but I only said, there's a ghost, repeatedly like a broken tape. That night, 
I eventually slept in Jay's bedroom. This experience took place from 2003 to 2007. And because I was born in 1998, you should be able to understand that I will do my best to give you a full in-depth recollection of this ghost. The only people I will mention that should appear in this post are my mother and my brother, who in the beginning is not yet born. He was born in 2004, so initially it was only my mother and I. A long time ago in my hometown, my mother and I moved into a duplex where the landlord lived upstairs while we lived downstairs. This house as I remember it was older, but must have been remodeled because it looked very 2000s and not from the late 19th century. We had a front porch and a decent sized backyard with a fireplace in the center of it. About as big as a yard can get in an urban in the middle of our street home. Now for the layout of this duplex. I wasn't there when the moving in of furniture took place. I actually hung out with my aunt or my guardian. But the moment I stepped into our new home, I was excited. Excited to get on my CTR TV. In all honesty, but anyways. When you first walk into the house, you'll find that our dinner table is directly to the right of the front door. Looking forward to the living room, the CTR TV sat on the floor like those models usually could. The couch to the wall to the left wall. Farther back from the front door to the other side of the duplex was a slide door to the backyard. And to the left of that door, the computer and desk against the left wall. Behind the couch was like some sort of counter. The wall was cut out to give you a view of the kitchen. To the right of that, the actual entrance to the kitchen. The kitchen was how you got to the two bedrooms, closet and bathroom. In fact, all of those rooms were connected. My bedroom and mom's bedroom had no door, so we could always see what each other was doing. It had a closet that had a door to the bathroom. Bathroom has a closet door and a kitchen door. I do remember how everything else was laid out, but let me not bore you too hard. 2003. Finally, to the thing you're reading this for. The second thing I did after settling down into my new home was look out the sliding door to the backyard. Almost instantaneously, this experience introduces you to her. I don't have a name for her. She, the spirit, never said her name, nor do I remember what the history of the duplex said online. I thought nothing of the girl I saw staring down at the fireplace, and I remember what she was wearing and looked like to this day. I don't remember her face, only her scar that I will reveal to you soon. She didn't turn around, so at this time I've never seen her face. As she stared down at the fireplace on moving, the sun reflected off her gorgeous golden hair and she was wearing some kind of white dress. To be honest, that feels like a common thing with female spirits and dresses, doesn't it? The dress was gent gently being brushed by the wind. It was afternoon. The sun was high in the sky at this time and yet there she was. Little did five or six year old me realize that she wasn't actually alive or there. Little did I realize, but would soon learn, that she was more than what she seemed. I think I asked my mother who she was. Mom would always ask me who I was talking about. She couldn't see her, yet I could. Every day, she would be there by the fireplace in the same position all morning, staring at this fireplace. I never thought of approaching her for some reason, but I have been in the backyard plenty of times, and whenever I did go back there, she wasn't there. This next bit, I'm not sure if it was before my brother was born or after, but because I actually have no memory of my brother during this moment, it had to be before. One day, I was sitting at home by myself in the living room. It was the weekend and mom was working, so I decided to make a bowl of cereal and almost turn the TV on, when suddenly out of nowhere, my soul was startled by the sound of a very, very loud robot voice that spoke an entire sentence. My thoughts were everywhere, scrambling to try to understand what I heard. Our landlord was quiet, pretty much never home, so I knew it couldn't have come from upstairs. 
I merely remember that this great and powerful voice was all around me. Maybe it was in my head, I'm not sure. But she randomly entered into my thoughts. I somehow felt that her and that one time her voice were connected. I would never hear the deep electronic voice ever again. 2004 is when things started becoming increasingly real. This is the year when my brother would be born in October. So I have a few things that I can recollect that I know for sure happened in this year. I feel that the activity increased throughout the years. By the time we moved out, she could do anything and has done a lot. 2004, what a year of nostalgia for me. I was as much of a gamer then as I am now at 23 years old. Although back then, I would actually watch TV. My favorite show was, funny enough, Ghost Hunters. Today, I don't really like or think that show was real, but damn, back then I did. And she, my friendly ghost with no name, put fuel to that fire. There was this one day, sun out, and all where mom was sitting in the living room. I could in fact see her head over the counter in the kitchen. I pulled out my back, then childhood board game. Sorry. And said out loud, setting up in the middle of the kitchen floor. Who wants to play a board game with me? I'm not sure why I used who rather than do you when the only person there other than I was my mom. She was talking about her CNA job with someone on her phone, so she wasn't listening to me. However, the voice of a young girl said something to the left of me. To the left of me was the refrigerator and to the front of the refrigerator was the entrance to my mom's bedroom. This voice said in a playful voice, I do. I was fascinated not frightened at all for some reason. To hear a voice coming from nowhere and pushing it off as a normal thing, might I add. Okay, I said, you go first. I pulled a card out for the voice and I watched and I waited. The card was an eight and I gave the spirit the green pieces while I was red. Of course, and much to my disappointment, the green pieces didn't move at all. They had to be moved by me. I ended up playing an entire game of sorry by myself feeling a very cold air around me. Again, I thought absolutely nothing of it. My mum eventually got up from the couch and went to the fridge to get something from it. That was when the cold air dissipated. I don't remember if my mum and I conversed, but eventually that night, things would change forever in that apartment. Night came and I was sleeping soundly well into my dream world. I should say that this memory is very foggy so I'm going to do my best to make sense of the conclusion of it. My dream was very abnormal. Everything around me was fogged like an old Silent Hill video game, hiding the surroundings in a creepy empty void. I was in my bed in the dream and she, the blonde girl, was sitting in that gray void next to the bed. Her face was blurry as hell, but I knew something was wrong with it. Her hair was parted and I don't actually think she had eyes. She was pale and looked like she sat in a fire. Her skin was covered in burns. She was sitting on her legs with a very friendly smile across her lips. Hi, would you like me to read you a story? She asked me, and then immediately began reading to me something from Mother Goose. She never gave me a chance to respond to her question. The entire dream went on like this. Her voice faded out slowly, and before I knew it, I would be awake again the following morning. Apparently, as I was sleeping, I got out of bed and asked my mother about her. I described the girl to my mom and everything, yet I remember none of that. I was sleepwalking, both dreaming of the girl reading a book to me, while my body got up to tell my mother about the ghost. My mother brought it up to me eventually, and for some reason, I was confused as to what she was talking about. It was almost as if I completely forgot about the ghost girl. The next incident is a repetitive nuisance. Anytime mom and I returned home, the living room TV remote would be laying face down at the center of the room with the back cover missing and the AA batteries hidden in two places. We'd have to find them every single time. I wonder what my mother thought about all of this. I can only tell you in depth about my brother and myself. I think my mom must have been trying to make sense of the remote situation. Maybe she blamed it on me. Maybe she had incidents that I don't know about and didn't want to scare me. The remote game, as I call it, carried on for months. It would finally stop once my brother was born. This is when things get real. 
I would have urges of jealousy or eagerness. I'd bring a butter knife in hand to try to suffocate my brother, and I loved the kids so much I can't explain why I would make such violent attempts. I would stop myself before I did anything. I don't actually remember grabbing the knife ever, in fact. My brother was never harmed, but the spirit girl had plans with him. For a while, the house was quiet. Time passes. I do not recall any more incidents of 2004. 2005. I can basically sort out these memories through the video games I played. This year was when Star Wars Battlefront 2 released, even though I was playing quite a lot of Star Wars Bounty Hunter and Destroy All Humans. My brother, who I will name for the sake of naming him, is called Austin. He was becoming talkative and still in a crib at the time of this next incident. This incident consisted of a second dream that signalled the return of her. She was not absent long since the last incident I described. This last time, she was going to be moving things and people while you were there to see it in your peripherals. She would talk a lot more, but I could no longer see her in 2005. In fact, she ditched me for my brother to become his imaginary friend. The first incident of 2005, she appeared in my dreams to read me the itsy bitsy spider, but my brother was there next to me. My bed was outside in the backyard and she was sitting in the middle of the fireplace reading to both of us. The second incident initiates her power. I was sitting in my bed in pitch black. My mom's room, which I'm able to see from my bed, had my brother's crib around the corner, just on the other side of the wall of my bed. I'm sitting there trying to sleep when all of a sudden I hear footsteps from the kitchen to my brother's crib. I watch, fixing my eyes and adjusting to the dark. There was absolutely no one there. I then heard something dragging and a thud. Out came my already walking brother, who had no way of getting out of the crib. It was too high for him to do so. He walked up to me, not creeped out at all compared to me, speaking gibberish. I went to tell mom that Austin got out of his crib somehow. She told me to go back to bed and she'll take care of him. Creeped out, I remained in bed, staring at my ceiling for a while. I made friends with my next door neighbour in 2005. His name was Isaiah, but he never really experiences any of these incidences with me. If he has, I don't know about it. I only mention him to bring up his house sitting to the right of my home. I was social for a time and was quite the daredevil. At night was when the spirit would do things in front of me. One in particular was my brother in that little jumper thing babies sit in to walk around. Note that somehow he walked to my side of the bed that night, yet he can't really walk like that. He was bouncing around and beating up all of the spinning circles, pressing buttons, dancing to the audio music, when suddenly he got real quiet. I was playing Pac-Man World 2 in my mom's bedroom while he was in the kitchen, so right outside the doorway. He was staring at about my height, but nowhere in my direction. He was looking to the small open space to the left of the refrigerator and talking. Austin was laughing and talking gibberish with someone he thought was there. Mom noticed this too when we were like, Austin, who were you talking to? He would do this for a while. He actually got out of his crib one more time eventually this year, but I'm not sure when that was. But I remember carrying him and barely being able to lift him over the side of the crib back into it. I have one more thing for 2005, and I honestly think this is the coolest incident I have of the spirit. It was night time, and I was playing Star Wars Bounty Hunter. My mum's bed had a little lamb on the left side of it. Out of my peripherals, I saw the corner of her bed's blanket lift up into the air and drop back down when I attempted to directly look at what in blazes was going on. Again, I was thrilled rather than chilled. If I were to guess what the ghost girl was doing, she was probably laying in my mom's bed to watch my brother in his crib. At this point, I no longer hear or see her, so I can only make guesses of where she's standing based on peripheral sightings or what my brother was up to. My brother was sleeping when this happened. 2006. There is not much that I can remember of this year, but I could ask about my brother about his experiences eventually. I remember at least two things. One of them was how I was having emotions that were not my own. 
I'd be stuck in trances. There is no known order of events for this year. The closet that connects my bedroom to the bathroom was a point of interest this year for me. Something always told me that whenever my nose bled, or if I bled anywhere at all, to wipe it all over the walls of the closet. At night, I felt like someone was watching me from the keyhole. One day, I suddenly felt so depressed and aimless that it took a stool and stared at the oven clock for five hours straight. Neither mom or Austin were home, so I was left there uninterrupted. My thoughts were creepy. I was remembering a fire, yet I never experienced a fire as big as I was imagining. 2007. Austin is talking great by now. I began hearing laughter and footsteps in my mom's bedroom, and Austin would sleep in the same bed as mom. The crib was removed at this point, and the TV in the bedroom area was moved at least three times. That TV was new at the time, yet there was a day I was playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The TV was sitting on the floor next to mom's bed, and I sat right in front of it. The TV turned itself off. I heard the button clank and everything, so I turned the TV back on. I continue to play the game, and the TV does the same thing. It turns off, and the sound of the button on the TV being pressed can be heard. I sat there and grumbled. I turn the TV on again, and I sit there and watch the power button of the TV, waiting for it to turn off again. Sure thing, I see the button being pushed into the TV, the loud click sound these old CRT TV buttons had, and the static of the TV screen dissolving. I never left a bedroom so fast. The TV remote throughout this year would get thrown around, and I was able to see the ghost girl again. Austin and I saw her staring at the backyard fireplace. One night, we had people over and had a bonfire, and I remember seeing the spirit hovering in a tree branch above us, staring at the fire. Do you remember when I said that she looked like she was burned alive in that dream a few years back? Her dress was now dirty, and her face was not blurry anymore. I just couldn't make out facial features. Eventually, my mom would look up the history of this apartment. At some point in the 1900s, the duplex was set on fire, and this girl my brother and I always saw was caught in the middle of it. She passed away in either the bedrooms or living room. My friend next door and I started to not get along, and before any of that got worse, mom, my brother and I moved out. The day came where we'd see that house one last time. Mom pulled out of the driveway, and Austin and I were in the back seat. On our porch, I saw her again. She had her hand on the railing watching us drive off. I asked mom, is she coming with us? My mom, scared by my question, responded with, hell no she isn't, and sped away. Two years later, my friend's house would mysteriously be set on fire, from the side of their house facing the duplex. My friend's house was completely destroyed. I believe that duplex is still there to this day. In fact, I'm going to look it up on Google Maps in a minute. To experience such paranormal activity made me believe that life has a lot more secrets and many the eye can't meet, nor the mind is able to explain. We know very little about our world and spirits like this girl are the many reasons why you should keep an open mind. For some backstory, I used to live in this house for about 11 years. Once, I'd ask my mom if she had seen, heard, or experienced anything in there. She told me that up in the attic, when they, her and my dad, were first moving in, she went to store some things up there and noticed this weird door made of plywood. She opened it, and lo and behold, a small mattress that looked like it was for a child. Then, she discovered a picture of a girl hanging from a single nail above the mattress. She examined the photo, and there was nothing written on the back of it, and nothing to indicate the time period except the girl's appearance. I still haven't been able to figure this out. And that was that. The whole story. Today, though, I went up to see for myself. See, I've been wanting to see this for about a year, and I got my chance today. The deal for the house closes on Friday, since it's currently on the market and has a full offer put in. I went up with my dad and sister to see if we could find anything. We went into the small room and I did see the tiny mattress. 
It was old and stained, and you could see the springs through the thin material. We looked around for about 10 minutes, and my main focus was on the picture. I eventually found it, but it wasn't hanging on the nail my mom described. It was right outside the small room, on the floor. I picked it up and exclaimed, and carried it back downstairs. I had taken it outside with the intention of taking it to my current house, but I decided to put it back because it felt wrong to take it. Like something was telling me it was wrong. So I took some pictures of it and put it gently back on the attic steps. I said something along the lines of, here's your picture back, I'm sorry I took it. I then went back outside and got in the truck. When we got home, I was worried about something happening that correlated with the picture. So I thoroughly washed my hands. Then later, I deleted the pictures off my phone after I had shown some close friends that I had previously told this story to. This wouldn't be as creepy, but my mom also told me about how she would find me in my room at that old house when I was small, and it appeared like I was talking to nobody. She would ask me who I was talking to, and I would say, I'm talking to Lisa. Now, I don't know what to make of this, but if this is the little girl I used to play with as a little kid, what do I do? I'm worried about residual energy and something following me. So, what do you guys think? In a town near Portland, Oregon, at about 7 or 8pm on an overcast dark night in 2006 or so, I saw a shadow entity in the driveway across the street. I was playing World of Warcraft at the time. I recall I was playing my warlock and was in Shatrath City, and I'd positioned my computer so the window out of my second story room was looking down at the T of my neighbourhood, because I liked the view. I saw a flicker in my eye and looked across the street to the driveway of my neighbour's house. They had four cars in the driveway when they normally only had one or two. And the only the porch light was on, not the driveway floodlight that they had above the garage door. It was a two car garage with cement stairs leading up to the left of the driveway to the main door. I saw something moving between the cars, but I couldn't make out any limbs or identifying features because it was so dark. In this area at nights when it's overcast, it gets extremely dark, almost pitch black. So it wasn't strange to me that I couldn't identify it. It just seemed like a person walking between the cars. Seemed average person height at least. Well, then it sped up. Across maybe five seconds or so, went from walking speed to running speed to maybe 30ish miles an hour, zooming around all four cars in the driveway before it disappeared entirely. When it started speeding up to about bike riding speed, all of the lights started flickering in all of the cars. These were older cars. I recall an old maroon four-door Civic-like car. Not a car I would expect had a fob or ability to flash like that while it was off. Even the floodlight above the garage was flickering, lighting up the entire area. This thing was moving so fast, I couldn't tell what it was, but it was just shadow. Even with lights, I couldn't see anything but blackness. Then the house lights, even inside the house, all of the lights flickered, not in unison, at all for a solid two-ish seconds, before everything just clicked back to normal, and it was done. I stared for a while after that, nothing. I have no explanation, and to this day, I regret never going over there and asking the neighbours if they saw anything too. I didn't know them, and I was only about 16 at the time. I just told my mom, who told me weird stuff happens. I went on to get a bachelor's in physics actually, to see if I could find anything that made sense to fit my new world view. And that was basically one big intro to a whole lot more questions than I ever anticipated. I've thought through a multitude of possibilities, the most logical being a hallucination. But to my knowledge, I've never hallucinated before then or since. Nor did anyone else around me hallucinate or have any strange symptoms. So I rule out carbon monoxide poisoning. I see other people stating they've seen shadow people, but I'm not sure this was a person. Definitely don't know if it had a hat to be a hat man, and it seems normal accounts of shadow people 
have them not zooming around things and making lights flicker. And now, I'm a father. I have a wonderful wife and a great job. But this still takes up immense real estate in my head. Any direction or insight appreciated. Would particularly like to hear about or speak with others who have seen similar things.